Welcome back to the European Challenger Circuit here in Poland. The uh, volume in my headphone just shot up really a lot and I <laughs> scared myself with my own voice. That's really hard to do, I can tell you. Uh, my name is Joe Miller. Joining me, of course, is Jaws from Riot Games. Uh, Jaws, we've seen two out of three games. Obviously, it's 1-1. That's why we're going to see the third game. Uh, but both of them were really, really epic games. Yeah, it was... First off, SK with Jax Kogma just completely obliterating CLG. CLG put up a pretty strong fight in the early game, but SK was just able to run away with it. And in game two, CLG did what they do best, which is get to late game, get Froggen really, really farmed, get Froggen Warmogs, Getting and then fed, and win just the game. get a Baron and just push, 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 push. And that's exactly what they did. And however, all credit to SK because that was a topsy turvy game. Yeah, it was it all over the place. Actually, went back and forth pretty much the entire time. Uh, obviously, now we are into game number three. You can forget what's happened almost because it's all down onto this one game. The winner of this next game will go through into the grand final to take on Moscow Five, who already beat Curse Two Zero a little bit earlier on today. Uh, we will have the third place game in between the uh, this second semi final and the grand final itself. But we are into the picks and the bands. So let's see what's going to happen. We actually have some statistics. So Statistically speaking, Alistair first pick is pretty likely in this game. Yeah, CLG loves their Alistar first pick just because of the flexibility. Um, that's my opinion, at least, that he can go into the jungle. Snoopy's a really strong alley jungle. He's been running alley both yeah. games, as well as Crapo able to use him. I believe they used him in the second game when Moscow 5 ran that interesting swap with the teleport gangplank. And, yeah. uh, that was pretty powerful. I believe that was an Alistar support and a Malphite jungle, as we see Yorick Man going out, as well as Jax for CLG. Karthus and Rumble for SK. They really do not want... Froggen on Karthus or I, Wicked on Rumble. I, I really wonder if they're going to ban Anivia this time. I mean, I I agree Karthus needed to be banned now. Froggen was also on Karthus from what we've seen. And yeah, that's the thing. On the purple side, you're even more limited than on the blue side because if you don't ban Chen or Malphite, for example, yeah. um, or Urgot, chances are one of those three are going to be picked up early on. Uh, and CLG this time saying, okay, we're just going to go Malphite, bam, we want that power uh, of the Malphite we've seen. Um, you know, they can play him in both positions, yep. but Wicked is the strong one in the uh, CLG lineup with this uh, Malphite in the top lane. Definitely. We saw in game one, Arane wrecking house with a jungle malphite so and snoopy in game two or in game one when they played moscow five in the group stages snoopy used a jungle malphite to devastating effect and in this jace pack uh jace patch malphite is particularly strong as we see the nunu kogma combination from sk uh being almost instantly locked in yellow star loves that kogma yeah, Yellow Star, you know, really well known for his uh, Cogmore play as well. Kind of surprised me uh, that we've not really seen any Corky Leona uh, because that was the, the lane that Against All Authority just seemed to master at the Intel Extreme Masters in Hanover. Like this whole, um, this lane, it was Yellow Star and N-Rated who, uh, who really brought that one to life and it got then picked what seemed like throughout the entire thing. And as I say that, there's Corky. <laughs> And uh, who knows, maybe even on Leona, we've seen uh, Crepo playing Leona. Um, to, I'd say to mix with it, in game number one he played Leona, and um, his ulti seemed a little bit off, uh, which I'm sure he won't mind me saying, to be honest. Um, and you know, CLG ended up going out, losing that game. Uh, but now with a newfound confidence, we, they uh, had a bit of a break. He were up at the top of the uh, cinema with us just having a chat. And I think confidence is high generally, and there it is, called yep. Leona. There's the Leona pick. Corky Leona as a combination is so strong and so aggressive. And we had mentioned this before, Kogma Nunu takes a little bit of time to ramp up. And CLG made sure that Kogma and Jax would not be on the same team. The real terror in game one was definitely Kevin on Jax. Uh, I believe at one point he was about 6 0, 7 0. And Yellow Star was able to supplement that damage really well. However, Leona Corky, if Crapo can land those Zenith Blades and get that stun. Yellow Pete will be able to dash in immediately, shred the armor, drop his missiles, and potentially melt Kog'Maw right away. <laughs> I just... <laughs> oh, sorry, I caught I, Joe as I, he was taking a small drink. It's a, uh, no, it's I, a, actually, a bit was, of an oven was, in here, so, yeah. I was, <laughs> laughing, I was laughing when I just saw Twitch pop up and heard the Polish commentators in the background just saying, 
Good old, good old pick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, probably is going to be. <laughs> and there is Hecker in, and we've not seen him. Oh, no, quick swap. There's going back Maokai, to Maokai. <laughs> uh, which we have seen him. We have seen, and with Maokai in the jungle, SK have won every single game. Yeah, and Maokai is just such a strong pick in general. He's so good at just picking someone out, jumping on top of them, and just mm. CCing them so hard. And his ultimate, that damage mitigation, is so powerful and also allows SK to pick their fights. And that combined with Ocelot on Anivia, we saw Ocelot dominating with Anivia against Team Acer. They ran a Protect the Cog comp with Yorick, who is actually banned as well. So see what they're going to be picking for their top lane. But already SK really pulling out all the stops and picking what they are super comfortable with already. <coughs> I'd like to see now. Um, I think Anivia would actually fit into this setup pretty damn good uh, from what CRG have got. Obviously, you're going to have Malphite, who's got an unstoppable force in there. You've got uh, Leona, who's going to be in the middle of them, getting those stuns out as well. Um, and to be honest, Anivia would find that a, a fairly easy time to drop the uh, to drop them in. Obviously, um, how did I miss that Kevin picked up Anivia? Um, but I did, apparently. <laughs> and I was waiting That's for right. CLG to flash up Anivia, but it was already picked over on the other side, which I uh, totally missed. So apologies for that one. Yeah, it's good. it looks like it's going to be my a, eyes. Uh, no, nah, it's all right. It looks like it's going to be actually a quick roll swap mid because, or not roll swap, champion swap with Ocelot on Anivia and Froggen's going to be taking Ari. Wicked grabbing that Shen again. Once again, CLG, I, I really feel like they're going to try and disorient SK. SK likes to group up. They like to force those fights, and especially with Anivia, they want to pick someone out. Arane is going to make that really easy with the Maokai, and Ocelot's going to be able to follow up with the stun and then let Yellowstar clean up. However, with the Ari, if Ocelot drops a wall, Froggen's basically just going to be able to dash around it. And yeah. the Malphite is also going to be able to initiate through it. There are a ton of dashes. Actually, I believe every single member of CLG has a dash. So whether or not they saw the Anivia or were just saying, we want a lot of mobility, that's exactly what they did. Looks like it's going to be an Udir potentially top lane, a top lane Udir. I don't believe we've seen that in, in a while. At least I haven't seen it. Yeah, it looks like Kevin's going to be going Udir top lane. Udir still a pretty solid top lane, however, he is potentially gankable, and he's really just going to be looking to farm uh, going into that early game, get you know, get turtle stance. It'll be interesting to see if he goes for tiger stance or phoenix stance, getting that area of effect, yeah. try to farm, 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 or for the tiger stance to just jump all over Wicked, who is on Shen. We're going to find that out here. Obviously, uh, Wicked, we've seen him play Shen in that last game. Um, he went teleport Shen. I think this time he's like, well... <laughs> Wasn't all that effective. Yeah, let's grab uh, an ignite. Ah, <laughs> uh, actually, no. We are going to see it switch over. So uh, it's going to be Shen in the jungle. As I as I said uh, before, I think Snoopy going to be a little bit more confident with that Shen. Uh, you know, Wicked plays a great Malphite as well, which always uh, adds into things. But um, I guess the the fact that Udi is going to be wanting to get rid of that shield as often as possible um, away from Malphite as well is going to be a big factor as to why they've gone with Udi in that top lane for Kevin. Uh, we saw him on the last game, Jax in the first game. Um, to be quite honest with you, he looked damn strong. He looked brilliant, to be honest with you. I mean, if you don't know the story about Kevin, basically he's the, it was the old SK top laner, then they moved him to the bottom lane, then he basically apparently got bored of it, so he went back to the top <laughs> lane, and they got rid of Youngbook, and that was the whole drama before this event, but his, his performances up until now have, for me, silenced any critic that I could have had with that whole switching on going. Yeah, and just a really good lineup from SK. SK has been showing that while they do have a new lineup, they are so strong as a team. That game one was all about them grouping up and initiating on the right fights. And even in game two, they used, they had great team compositions and also great team chemistry. So I think this semifinal, regardless of who wins, is just a fantastic series overall. However, I'm going to give the edge to CLG again. Um, we had talked jokingly a little bit um, about their Wombo combo, but their Wombo combo is no joke. We've got the Malphite into Leona or Leona into Malphite with an Ari a quirky follow-up and Shen to just keep people in place. And that's exactly what CLG wants to do in these fights as we potentially see an early invade by SK. 
Well, CLG there have uh, set up somewhat of a line defense here. With SK starting to work in there. And actually, they're going to get the stun down onto Snoopy. The exhaust comes in. Snoopy forced to flash. Yellow Star's not having any of it. He wants to follow up on this one. Snoopy does manage to escape, though. But SK, uh, uh, you know, Yellow Star, that's the kind of flash where you think, do I or don't I? Am I going to get this kill or am I just going to end up throwing a flash away? He's forced Shen to flash already. Did he really need to flash over? Was he going to get that kill? Well, obviously he didn't in the end. So you know, it's easy with hindsight to look on uh, to look back at those things. But anything that can give you that advantage, Yellow Star will definitely uh, take the chance for it. Uh, but I guess that's uh, pretty much all we're going to see for that early game action. Again, a nice warding position from SK, and this is what we saw from them in game number one that they won. Um, a early ward gave them great vision, uh, which they utilised. And also, they forced Wicked to take Dash, so it, or, sorry, Snoopy to take Dash as well instead of his Vorpal Blade, so he's going to need a little bit more help, that Vorpal Blade giving him a little bit of extra healing. So he does have that Key Strike to give him a little bit of extra damage with that passive, but he's not going to get the early healing until he hits level 2, which he should do off of this blue buff. Blue, and yeah. So yeah, interesting, um, they're not going to go for the Malphite jungle, they're going to go for the Malphite top, and I actually really like um, the Malphite versus the Udyr in this situation. I think Wicked's going to be able to manage the Udyr as well as set Snoopy up for some potentially pretty sweet ganks. Yeah, we can see that the vision has already been put, been put in place by Wicked in this top lane. No real uh, messing around from his point of view. Gone in there got that ward down wants to stay safe this is something that we you know, we've been critical before about um, some of these lanes and not getting those wards in position early enough knowing that you know, it's very possible that a level two gank will come in you've got to be prepared for that kind of thing and you can't end up throwing the uh, first blood away as it stands this one um, is not going to be such an early gank actually Shen has just uh, crossed over here dashing through into the dragon pit and he's going to come down into this bottom lane but there is the early ward yeah, great ward placement um, by SK <laughs> catching Snoopy right there. He was trying to make something happen. A cool thing about Shen jungle is the angles at which he's able to gank. Uh, Shen is able to go through so many walls, and he has so much mobility, and it looks like Snoopy's going to try and make something happen mid lane against Ocelot. We'll have to see if he's able to pull it off. Yep, Snoopy's spending a lot of time. He's, he is one of those junglers who you know, doesn't necessarily uh, spend his majority of time farming, 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 farming. He likes to wait. He doesn't mind to wait in his lanes. And actually, as they go in there, Froggen is going to land the charm, but they decide, no, nope, let's not stick around as uh, Arani actually did show himself. Shen did already back off from that position as well and went down to continue the jungle. So, Kevin, what's he got? A point in... Well, pretty much everything except Phoenix <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Kevin is really looking to bully Wicked out. He's got the turtle sand, so he's going to be able to sustain. And he also has that. Uh, he also has the stun with the bear stance and the tiger being able to hit, make those double hits. Man, that ward is really playing into SK's hands. They just ping down on Snoopy, so they know where he is. And Kevin is just continuing to abuse Wicked top lane and. Also, bottom lane, Yellow Star and Nif really pushing. However, there goes Crabo jumping onto Yellow Star and Yellow P trying to follow up. Yellow Star following extremely low, but a great snowball from Nif to slow that attack speed and that movement speed of Yellow P. So, you know, great play overall from that support Nunu. Wicked now back up to a decent amount of health. Kevin is going to get four, so he actually still has uh, a bunch of pots. I think that's a four. My eyes are uh, actually playing tricks on me probably, but it looks like a four to me. Uh, so he certainly has the opportunity to stay in that lane, but he's st currently stood on his turret, so I'm assuming he's going to be headed home, and he's going to be coming back into things with the Doran's Blade, plus a Mana Pot and a Ward as well. So uh, he's going to get that vision all, all sewed up, and that's one of the things that SK um, are really going to be happy about. You know, that early ward on the bottom side of the CLG jungle revealed Snoopy again, at which point Kevin can say, okay, I'm safe for now. He's not going to be in the next 10 seconds here. However, he is now in this bottom lane. And the question is, can CLG get the start to this gank that they really needed? They're pinging, they're pinging up in the top side of the river, I'm assuming, telling uh, Maokai to get some wards in there, or maybe thinking that Snoopy is around that area. And Snoopy is just not quite the open. Oh, there he goes. Opening. He's into the second side, but they're sticking to the tower right now, or uh, SK. They 
It's almost as if they feel that something's up. He's not spotted Snoopy around for a little while. What are we going to do? And he's oh, just revealed no. himself there. Crepo misses. And, uh, well, that will be no gunk for our uh, CLG. That was really unfortunate because Snoopy actually clicked himself out of the bush in anticipation of Creeple landing that Zenith Blade, and Creeple wasn't able to convert that stun. As we see Aranay going in, wicked great flash, and man, Kevin in that top lane, grabbing the Doran's Blade, he's really looking to be aggressive early in this top lane. Yeah, he's gone Tiger Stance as well, three points currently uh, in there, one in turtle, one in Bear Stance as well. And now currently Arani actually coming in towards Froggen in the middle who's out of mana but in a good position to get away from things and that's the thing what I uh, mentioned before the uh, Udia lane, forget that because we've actually got Yellow Star putting the pressure on here. Again, not quite got the damage yet these uh, two AD carries to be finishing off these kills. And yeah, as I was saying in the uh, in the top lane, the Udia, you know, Malphite shield is basically taken away as soon as it comes up there. Yeah, Kevin doing a great job with that Tiger Stance to keep Wicked's shield on cooldown. I believe it's going to be one Tiger Stance combo right when he switches stances uh, that are going to be so able to drop that shield. It, yeah. yeah, so Aaron a going into this top rush, um, looking actually bottom lane, Yellow Pete starting to build a bit of a lead, 54 minion kills, 239, and we could potentially see a gank top lane a little bit risky. However, Wicked really getting harassed down by Kevin. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, Wicked, we saw earlier, did burn his flash, and actually we are going to see them come in there. Wicked could be in trouble now, and actually use Unstoppable Force to get away, uh, which totally works against Unstoppable Force's name, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, but still, you know, Blue Buff has just been started. There's a charm, actually, from Frog and onto Ocelot, but does he have the damage to finish off here? Well, there's a combo from Ocelot, uh, Ocelot, but that's not enough to uh, take down Frog. And here comes Aranyi. That ward in the bush is going to be enough to get in there, but again, not feeling confident enough to uh, really push it down. Frog and just showing his experience in this one. Yeah, he's going to see sees the bear coming running in towards him. He's like, oh, not falling for that one. I am off. Yeah, I, I think he decided to back off. And this is actually the first time that. CLG has not run Jungle Alistar this series, and it's actually starting to show because Snoopy really likes to get an early Oracles and an early Boots of Mobility to get map control, and Froggen definitely did not know that there was a ward in that left mid brush, and Aranay was actually able to punish him a little bit for it. We see him at about 50% health and a little bit lower on mana as a result, but Snoopy, he has his Heart of Gold, but he still hasn't gotten that Oracles yet, so I really am interested to see how CLG is going to react once they have the Oracles and really feel like they have that map control. Down in the bottom, we can uh, take a quick look at the CS at 65 to 54. So nice little lead from Corky and uh, has awarded oh, that brush. And if you're not tap. getting away, and, uh, nicely played from the other people. Waits until almost the end of that saying, bam, I can <laughs> see you, you're not getting away. Again, Ocelot here in the middle gets hit with uh, both ways. Oh, Froggen's cute. And Froggen showing, this is this is the discussion that we had yesterday that Ban out is Anivia, or in this case, Pick is Anivia. Ban out is Karthus, and he's still gonna throw Ari at you. You know, his, his um, AP Cogmore is absolutely godlike as well. Um, and this is gonna be the first dragon. And, you know, they've not really done that much to force this dragon. You know, they've pushed their lanes out, they've gone there as a team, and they've taken it. SK have given that one up a little bit too easy, in my opinion. I think that a lot of pressure was put on mid. I think Froggen got a lot of poke down on Ocelot, so Ocelot may not have been as mm. confident. He grabbed Cleanse as well, something we didn't really touch on. So he's really looking for a defensive lane in mid, and Froggen is looking very strong. You said something game one, which I believe got quoted as well, which is that Froggen knows Anivia better than Anivia's mother knows Anivia. And that's going to play both into him playing the champion and playing against the champion. He knows exactly what the strengths are, he knows exactly what the weaknesses are, and he knows how to play against an Anivia, especially on a champion that he's equally as comfortable with in Ari. Yeah, and you know, that's the, the kind of familiarity that you only get from being that level of a play with that champion. I mean, it's, yeah. it's that kind of level where it can, oh, this is, could be dangerous for Yellow Star. Actually, the stone comes around and we see Yellow so flashes away. Nif may not be so lucky. There is the bomb oh, going wow. in and he's burning from the ignite, but up till now survives. If Corky only knew how low he was, <laughs> I think he would have probably uh, pushed that a little bit further. Here we see Arani actually coming into this brush. No ward down from Wicked, no ward at all. There is the stun and they are gonna dive in onto Wicked. What's he got available? Flash is available, so Wicked 
can flash away, but you know, he's, he's strong, he's Malphite, and he's gonna get first blood from that one after all that. And uh, there comes the teleport in from Chen as well. And Kevin now could be the one in a little bit of trouble, just switching between those stances. He will stay safe, but again, this is just great, great play from CLG. And Wiki was like, you know what, I'm pushing for this kill. Ocelot burning inside middle as well. Is he gonna get egged up here? I think he's about safe from that one. Yeah, he will stay alive. Uh, but as you said, Froggen, he knows so much about this uh, Anivia. You can look at a mana bar probably just off the top of his head, so he's got <laughs> enough for two of them and two of them. Probably, um, yeah. Uh, but that top, uh, that gank at top as well, it looked like uh, Wicked stayed around. Is he really going to unstoppable force in? And you see then the Maokai starts to get low, and then SK realize, oh yeah, they've got a Shen on their team, and now he's in the top lane. Yeah, as soon as the Shen ultimate started popping onto Wicked, I feel like SK should have just said, uh-oh, mm -hmm. we need to get out of here. And actually, that's what Arane did. I think Arane they did, did. say, uh-oh, <laughs> but they didn't quite get away. Yeah, Arane actually tried to get away, and that's where Wicked immediately counter-initiated. And that is what we've seen all tournament. We saw it even in game one, Acer versus MYM. 760 on Shen made three really clutch Shen ultimates that turned what could have been a successful gank into an actual counter-initiation. And going back to Ocelot, Ocelot actually had 30 health in that last exchange, so he was dangerous dangerously close to going down, and I think we're going to see more of that as Froggen continues to put the pressure on. He's got two Doran's Rings and a needlessly large rod, so he's going to be starting to hit pretty, pretty hard. Yeah, and you know, Wicked, with this Giant's Belt now as well in the uh, in the top lane, that's it's like, well, you can take my shield down in a couple of hits, but now I don't really care because I've got a Giant's Belt, and uh, <laughs> you know, that's plenty of health that I need. Philostone plus the Heart of Gold in there as well. He's been, uh, he's got a ward in the Tribush, so Wicked probably feeling uh, pretty safe uh, in terms of that top lane setup and how it is. However, down in the bottom, Crepo and Yellow Pete probably shouldn't feel quite as safe because Arani is in this bush waiting to make this move. There goes Nif. Question is, can he force Crepo away? Crepo's put a ward down in that brush, which very, very wise. He knows that he can be forced back, and uh, even if Aranyi comes through, then they'll spot that one coming in. Aranyi is looking like he goes home. Nope. Yeah, it looks so like Cancel the know. recall, but up at top, Wicked going very low here to Kevin, just as I said. He's starting to feel safe. Obviously, Kevin wants to make sure that he knows that he's not safe, that that tiger is gonna cause him more problems. Aranyi is still, by the way, in the bush waiting yeah it looks like bottom lane is trying to bait this out niff was kind of doing the bush dance where he was jumping in and out of the bush saying hey i'm here come jump on me to try and get to try and bait a zenith blade out of crapo but crapo is going to have none of it i'm and clg ping actually went down around that bush so they are 90 percent sure that erin is there and they were absolutely right in that case and yeah. going back top lane wicked picking up that giant's belt Typically, Malphite players are going to go for the Frozen Heart, and there's Snoopy jumping onto Kevin, trying to make something happen. Wicked is not in range for his ultimate. Snoopy's just going to put a little bit more harass down and then probably back off. Yep, there he goes. And typically, the Malphite player is going to be going for those gold pretend items. He has the Heart of Gold, he has the Philosopher's Stone, but his passive, that shield we keep talking about, actually scales off of health as bottom lane. We see it engage. Crapo jumping onto Yellowstar. There's a great ultimate. Yellowstar following extremely low. He is able to cleanse over the Ignite going down. Will he be able to be taken out? He is so low. They're going to turn onto Nif. How did he get out of that alive? Unbelievable escape. He had 60 health. However, Crapo showing why he is so scary on Leona, landing a perfect ult on top of Yellowstar. Yeah, and one thing that's, you know, he's not got the kill, and we've seen that a couple of times now. They've not really forced the issue of a kill in this bottom lane, but what it's allowed them, uh, or what it's forced Kong'Mon to do is go back multiple times, and that shows in the CS now, 133, to 98, that's a big lead between the two uh, AD carries there. Three and a half K for Cogmore, 4.4. Um, so it's almost a thousand gold difference between these uh, between these two players currently. Uh, in terms of items, that translates to Phage, Double Doran's Blade, Vamp Scepter, and the Berserker Greaves on Corky. And over there on the other side, you've got Zeal, Double Doran's Blade, um, and the Berserker Greaves as well, which uh, you know, Corky will be able to go back do a bit of shopping uh, pretty soon with that as well. Uh, Ari, meanwhile, in the middle, 146 CS. Yes. And as I say, that Ari does dive in. And Ocelot already at half HP. Let's not forget he went low multiple times, didn't quite get egged, and Froggen's just feeling confident. Yeah, he actually burned the cleanse on that. So Ocelot is now, he's about 6% health. He does have that damage, but 
if he gets egged in a bad situation, he's gonna be, get taken out. Froggen is hitting really hard. He's also clearing really hard, so he's gonna look to roam. Ari is such a strong roamer, especially with the mobility on her ultimate. Oh, but she, he just got snagged by a sapling. However, it looks like Sealed is gonna take down the second dragon. Yeah, this dragon has been pulled out. CLG already starting in this effort. Not quite connecting there for uh, Krempo. And actually, we are going to see a run. You come straight into the middle of the team. I'm not sure that was uh, the best idea. Ocelot's going to get egged here as well any second. There is the egg. They're surely just going to wait and finish that off completely, I'd imagine. So, yep, that is finished off. That's a great move from Krempo. Yellow Star's going to die. Uh, Kevin's not safe here as well with the uh, entire CLG team t uh, chasing him. Actually, Dragon, of course, didn't get taken down in the mix of that fight. Snoopy dying, but that's a one for four. But I hate to be negative, but what a horrible engagement from SK. They were all over the place with that one. Well, I think CLG actually caught them by surprise. I think RNA may have hit the W uh, for his snare and gone, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, like, I am <laughs> going in. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. I'm dead. Because as a Mauk, as a Mauka, you really sort of commit to a target. It's like, all right, fight, 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 fight. And then you're in there and you're like, well, I'm probably going to die. Um, but that was a great combination. We were talking about beforehand in Champion Select, the Crapo Wicked combination. Crapo landed, this is his second ultimate in a row. He's mm. landing it directly on top of Yellow Star. And Yellow Star did not have his cleanse because of the original gank bottom lane, or not really a gank, more of a really good ultimate from Crapo. And so in that, with that second ultimate, Crapo was able to hold Yellow Star in place so that Wicked could come in with the unstoppable force, and then from there it was just clean up. That leaves us with a 5-1 score. Actually looks so close. Yeah, that was a four, I believe it was a four, four for one, one. exchange yeah. and dragon for CLG. And CLG in complete control of dragon. They are up. They are almost 25,000 gold to SK's 20,000 gold. So CLG starting to build this lead. And unless SK really changes how they're fighting and really tries to stop Crapo from making something happen, because Crapo has really started to turn it on with this Leona, I, I really think SK's in a whole heap of trouble. A slot here and Frog are doing the, uh, the love dance in middle. Actually, there's the wall and oh, wrong side. Um, he wanted that one. And uh, yeah, this is interesting to compare since they both play this day, uh, those champions the last game, but reverse, to compare who can play what better um, at this level of the game. Um, and obviously, there are a lot of Ocelot fans out there, and there are a lot of uh, Crepo, uh, sorry, Froggen fans who probably have their own uh, idea of who's the better player between the two of them. However, one thing, this top lane, Wicked, with now a 2 0 2, got that Sunfire Cape finished. Um, is starting to be a little bit of a problem. Actually, they did try oh, and wow. gank him, and he walked away from a 2v1 with like, he's like, oh, you didn't even pop my shield. Yeah, oh, it looks fine. like, <laughs> it looks like Kevin, yeah, so much damage. As we see, bottom lane, great ultimate from Nif. However, Yellow Pete is going to pick up Yellow Star. Double exhaust going down onto Nif and Yellow, uh, sorry, Nif and Yellow Pete as they're just going to walk out of it. But Yellow Pete and Crapo are getting a little bit scary as Froggen takes out first turret of the game. He's slipping away slowly but surely. And by slowly, I mean fairly quickly. Uh, <laughs> from SK, I mean, you know, 1-1 one, one it was. Get to that dragon fight and, well, just went pear-shaped for them. Wicked, like I said, on this top lane is bullying Kevin. Kevin's not really had that much of, a, uh, of an option to get in there, really get involved. Uh, but they're sticking to, towards this lane phase, which for CLG is just fine. Um, they're winning pretty much overall. In fact, I think they'll be ahead in CS in everywhere but the top lane um, and in the jungle. But the difference between the two AD carries is 50 CS. Uh, middle lane, Froggen's got a 20 CS lead. Top lane, 136 to 149, so very close there, but in favor of Kevin. Uh, he's been on his turret pretty much the entire game, uh, or the entire last half of the game, let's say. Uh, and you can see that Kevin... Best dancing away as he saw Frog and Walls coming in there, and they're going to try and push down for their second turret of the game, which are uh, pretty close there. Uh -oh. but Kevin in this bush could be a little bit of see, trouble. Yeah, here. Ocelot's coming in as well. This is where we're going to really see how strong Wicked is. He does have unstoppable force to use if he needs to really escape from that one. Flash is available as well. Wicked, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, thinking he... about going in, gets the stun down on Frog and. That was a great Zonia's from Frog and actually uh, Anivia's Icicle, I'll call it that. Um, 
hit so hard off of that ultimate, mm. and Froggen used the burn the Zonias to completely negate that damage. So Ocelot was able to hit him with that um, with that stun, but so much of that damage that could have been translated into the lane just completely negated by that Zonias. Great play from Froggen. Smart stuff. And it looks like Yellowstar potentially posturing for something to happen. I don't know if we're going to see a flash or something. However, Froggen engaging, but with the so much mobility from Ari. Just yeah. goes in, sees Kogma, immediately dashes out. Yeah. And that's the beauty of, uh, of Ari, actually. Why she's uh, one of the most popular picks these days for that middle lane. Actually, yeah, bottom turret is being pushed as well. CLG concentrating on the farm rather than uh, taking down that bottom lane. They're quite happy with how it's going. They don't need to be taking that turret down and kind of moving the game to its next phase, so to speak, once the, uh, all those outer turrets are down. Yep. And mid is yeah. mid and top have definitely yeah. won their lanes and uh, for CLG and it looks like Yellow Pete and Crapo are going to continue the trend. Laning phase definitely ending for all three of these lanes and Froggen already starting to roam pretty hard. His ultimate is down because of that attempted gank. However, the amount of uh, minion kills that Yellowstar, as we see an engage going down, great ultimate from Crapo. Yellowpeed on a killing spree. He dives in, trying to take out Yellowstar. Will Crapo be able to get one more stun? He flashes in, gets the stun. That's a double kill for Yellowpeed. And this bottom lane showing how powerful they can be. Ocelot here also going to get pressured in the middle. Nice flash away. But Froggen's here as well. And this is going to be an egg at least. Will they be able to finish it off? And imagine so with Wicked there just being able to uh, tank up this turret. And there is the kill. Yellow Pete is unstoppable as he killed um, Cogmore over the other side of the map as well. And those pieces of the jigsaw all <laughs> finally slotting together for CLG. Yeah, and Yellow Pete. 5-0-2, 213 minion kills. He's got his Triforce already. He's got his Vampiric Scepter compared to Kogma. Oh, and another Dragon. So, Yellow Star on Kogma, doing that attack speed opening again, trying to potentially go in for that early Phantom Dancer, gets the pickaxe, but he is only able to really piece together small parts of these major items that he desperately needs as Kogma. That Infinity Edge, that Phantom Dancer, getting that attack speed, that crit, and CLG is just making sure that SK cannot get into this game. Um, they have been preventing RNA from putting early pressure in the jungle, and Snoopy's been doing a great job of turning these ganks around. And Wicked on Malphite. Malphite has been, speaking of unstoppable force, Malphite has been pretty much unstoppable this entire tournament. Corky is 4,000 gold ahead of uh, Cogmo, which, uh, you know, is a slight difference um, in balance between those two AD carries. I'm interested to see this top lane, where do they, when they actually stand and bang, how that goes. I mean, Kevin's got more sustained damage, especially when he gets a, a Ranya to come in here as well. But you can see that 2v1, they start to move in and it's like, oh, Shen's going, run away, run away, <laughs> run away. Yeah, uh, that's just, been the trend. They can't compete with that right now. Yeah, that's just been the trend with the top lane, or any lane for that matter. Anytime there's a gank going on, anytime... RNA tries to make something happen. He finally has both of his gold pretends, and it looks like he's going to be building into that Aegis of the Legion, but he just hasn't been able to relieve any of the pressure in these lanes. Oh, Ocelot in mid. mid yeah, again, Ocelot getting pushed down here. I'm not oh, sure no. they've quite got the damage to finish off the egg, though. And uh, Ocelot's going to get back up. That's a nice wall. Froggen, is he going to get taken down? Not quite. Uses the Zonias once again, and he's going to stick around to do the damage onto uh, Yellow Star himself. Here comes Yellow Pete from the side. Unstoppable force from Wicked. There's two kills at least. Nif is on the turret, but is he safe from it? I don't think so. With a full HP uh, Wicked, they decide to give up the uh, chase. As we see Kevin come around, flashes in to try and get the stun down, and there is Crepo diving in as well. Double kill for Malphite, and Wicked's like, I think we're gonna have this tower as well, and he's probably even gonna end up jumping onto Nif at some point. Actually, no, they're backing away and uh, gonna clear out the jungle. But again, just more and more impressive stuff coming up for CLG. 5-0-3 Malphite, 6-0-4 uh, Corky, 3-1-3 Ari. Crepo's got loads of assists. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> he just like does. running exactly how they wanted it to. It, he really does. He also has his Aegis of the Legion, finally, which is going to get magic resist armor, um, as well as a little bit of attack damage, and he's just going to help them snowball this game farther and farther ahead. Yellow Pete building his Infinity Edge, so in addition to his burst, and in addition to being faster, he's also going to be uh, hitting critical strikes that much more often. Um, 
Wicked actually picking up a Haunting Guise. Interesting pick. Um, it's going to give him a little bit of extra health and also give him a little bit of extra ability power. So, as well as he also got Sorcerer Shoes, so he's really going to be looking to hit that much harder with his abilities that um, Unstoppable Force actually scaling off of magic damage as well as having the knock up. And this is what CLG has been wanting to do since game one. Crapel has really finally found his stride with the Leona. We actually saw him disengage and then re-engage. Also, he did a yeah. flash and was able to stun and just continue to feed his team. And it's a testament to him having this 0-0-9 score. That is exactly the kind of score you want as a support, especially an aggressive support like Leona. Feed yeah. your team those kills. Just flawless performance up to now from CLG. And uh, there is the Oracle. And yeah, I was going to uh -oh. say, they can just start this Baron. Why not? Wicked's going to be defending with Froggen uh, from the incoming uh, attack that surely will come around. SK, yeah, they've got nothing to lose right now, have they? I mean, they can just, they, they have to come in. They can't give a free Baron away. Otherwise, they can, uh, you can call good games. There's the uh, sapling from Maokai that reveals Wicked and uh, Ocelot. Uh, sorry, Wicked and Froggen in there. And there is Baron taken down. SK not doing anything about it. And uh, Froggen's actually going to go aggressive in the other charm, not quite landing onto Nif. You would have uh, probably expected to see a very dead Nif if that would have landed. And now with this Baron on, they are going to start to push up this middle lane. But this is the this is the CLG that we thought we were going to see in those first two games. Um, or at least I did. I, I obviously can't speak for everyone. But after what we've seen in uh, DreamHack in Korea and up until this game today, uh, this tournament as well, they look like they don't skip a beat, you know. And that's what I expected from them. They've done that here in game number three. Uh, it's not overdue set though, so let's get back into it. So we do see the charm landing on Kevin. Question now is, can they defend it from a fed, barroned up CLG who are uh, running confidence through their veins right now? And there is the Shrelly as the unstoppable force goes in. Didn't really follow it up, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. Uh, but oh, they're actually backing away here, CLG. I mean, that inhibitor is completely naked, so uh, they can take that one down. There we go. Yeah, it looks that like they may have just burned that ultimate to push SK off of that inhibitor yeah. so that they could take it. Once they have that inhibitor down, they can just pick their lane and just shove, 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 clear out the jungle. CLG has complete control over this match, and it's going to take a massive error on their part for SK to come back into it. They are, CLG is so far ahead, they are so strong, and especially with, that, with Wicked on that Malphite, SK is really going to have to come up with something special. Oh, Froggen actually diving in there. That could go a little bit pear shaped. Um, could I use in the lightest sense of the word because they've turned it around completely there. There's a double kill for Corky. Wait for his Valkyrie to get back off uh, cooldown here and he's going to be going in for more. Uh, we see Snoopy actually chasing Nif completely away. There's Anivia and Maokai who are like, oh, let's run south. Uh, <laughs> they've gone south and there is the surrender vote and CLG going to go through with a 2-1 victory here into the grand final to take on Moscow 5. If we're being totally honest with ourselves, this is the final that everyone wanted to see anyway. Yeah, I think it's a rematch of the DreamHack final. Uh, CLG getting the best of Moscow 5, yeah. both in the group stages with that incredible comeback and then being able to actually 2-0 them in the final. And then in this group stage, they were able to take them out as well. So I think Moscow yeah. 5 definitely wants some revenge and they want to really reestablish their dominance in these live events. Well, Moscow 5, you know, they showed their shaky uh, times as well at the start of the tournament. No one was really sure, but... 2-0 curse, like it was easy stuff. Um, and also you've got CLG, who, uh, you know, SK had done a really good job picking up, you know, the first game, the second game, really good stuff. Third game, CLG, like, they, you know, they, they put their foot on the accelerator again and just cruised through it. Um, but the other two games, SK definitely performed um, and showed us that, you know, in the future when they've had a bit more time with this lineup, that they could very well be contesting at these big tournaments for uh, first place, for example. Yeah, I think the big thing thing with SK is that Udyr top lane may not have been the best choice for them because Kevin really was the MVP in those yeah. two games with the Jacks in game one and 
game two, not really able to pull it out. However, he was still so strong on that Aurelia, he actually almost turned it around, <laughs> almost yeah. one v 4 a couple times, getting the Guardian Angel. And I think game three, SK sort of showing their inexperience as a team, and CLG showing their ability to get through these best of threes and get to the grand final once yeah. again against Moscow Five. I cannot wait until that final. However, SK not quite done yet. They're going to be doing the third, fourth place match against Curseyu. Who do you think is going to be taking that one? Oh, that's a, that's a really hard one to call. I mean, Curse almost dropped out without too much to say from that game against Moscow Five. Like I said, it was almost like they were getting the job done, Moscow Five, more than anything. Um, SK, on the other hand, showed us some real quality signs there. A third place game is always hard to, to predict because Different teams feel differently towards the third place game. You know, it's like, it's, the, it's almost anticlimactic when you lose the semi-final and it's like, well, at least I'm playing in the third place playoff, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, third is worth more money, more points than fourth. It's and true. it's a third place and not a fourth place, you know. You've got to go in there. But with SK being that kind of moody, uh, very momentum-based team, I'm going to say probably curse um, for that third place game. But again, it's best of three, so uh, not quite sure how that's all going to go down. But I believe that that will actually be uh, our next game here from the uh, commentary booth, at least. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what CLG is going to pull out because Wicked was just playing Rumble day one and yeah. day two. It you know, he's really showing his diversity. So we're going to be uh, going downstage to uh, Wick Carmack, who's going to have a couple uh, interviews. All right, we're back on stage after this fantastic game uh, with Zenon from Riot Games. Please give a big round of applause for Zenon. <laughs> and for this interview, we will bring one of the most famous Scottish players for League of Legends. Maybe the only, <laughs> who knows? Maybe the only. It's Snoopy. Snoopy. So, Snoopy, that was a, a, an amazingly close PO3 after all. I just want to ask one quick question about the first, uh, first game. Did you see that early quick Baron coming and what was the call in voice chat afterwards? Tak więc, czy w pierwszym meczu widzieliście tego szybkiego Barona i co później zadecydowaliście robić? Well, we did call for it. We knew it was happening after they took the blue. Um, the problem was we sent Ezreal bot to farm already and it was just too late. Like, Cog, Jax, you're not going to stop it. Tak więc e, problem był w tym, że wysłali Ezra na dół, żeby e, farmował i po prostu nie byli w stanie resztą drużyny powstrzymać tego. And in the last game we saw uh, the, the Shen actually go into the, the jungle there. Uh, was that a CLG style mind game that you were playing there, where you were waiting until the last second to decide that, or was that always meant to go to the jungle? E, co tam było w drugim meczu z e, Shenem w dżungli? Well, we actually copied that from CLG and Aid in their last minute, last second swaps. Uh, a bit of cheese from them. Uh, it was always intended to go in jungle, though. Always intended. Tak więc w skrócie zawsze był plan, żeby Shen szedł do jungle. All right then. So you have qualified for the finals, and there is a certain uh, Russian team waiting for you guys over there. Uh, Moscow Five, apparently they're called. I just want to know, given the atmosphere here, given the heat in Warsaw and the general feeling of the event, how do you feel going once again into a final of a major circuit event against Moscow Five? Tak więc jak się czujecie po raz kolejny grać w finale dużego e, turnieju Challenger Circuit właśnie z Moscow Five? I look forward to taking home a check, first place. <laughs> Także. <laughs> I think they understood that. Whoever did not, ktokolwiek nie zrozumiał, Snoopy bardzo chciałby odebrać czek za pierwsze miejsce. All right, I think, thank you very much for coming out here, Snoopy. Good luck in the finals. Looking forward well to see more stuff from you guys. <laughs> to the point. So, we're going to go into most likely a 20 minute technical break so that uh, the crew can set up uh, the PCs for the semi final up here on stage. And uh, we will be back after the commercials. Wracamy po reklamach za jakieś 20 minut.